one of the greatest dilemmas that it appears that dentists have is the frustration of ha having unpredictable results day in and day out, changing labs, trying different methods for getting predictability, having remakes, being inefficient, losing profitability, and yet not knowing how to solve the problem. The irony is that there are some very predictable means of avoiding these things that we often don't take advantage of. Probably the number one thing that we miss out on that can help us more than any other thing is understanding how to make an articulator our best friend. Using and understanding instrumentation is something that can be so helpful to each and every one of us in clinical dentistry. There's no reason to make it complicated. And we believe many times dentists avoid using instrumentation or articulators because they believe and they've been taught, they've experienced in school that it's so complicated they don't think they can do it. So we wanna show you the four simple things that an articulator does that can help you more than you can imagine if you haven't been using one. I wanna demonstrate using a Dinar Mark 320 articulator, which is the articulator that we use in our practice. What does an articulator do? There are four primary jobs. If you understand these, you'll begin to understand and appreciate the value that's present there for you in using an articulator. Job number one, it records the condylar axis. We're trying to transfer from the patient to the clinical laboratory office setting uh, the parameters that we need in order to get predictability. The number one thing that we need to understand and find, identify, record, and capture is the condylar axis. And an articulator can do that for us in a very simple way. If we take an ear bow or face bow transfer and through the bite fork that we use to move toward the articulator and use to mount the upper uh, model, what are we doing? We're relating these upper teeth to the fossa of the maxilla. So we've got the anatomical information on our instrument of where the fossa is and how that relates to the upper teeth. Now then, once we've got that in, in, uh, information, we can go and take the lower cast, so I'm gonna take the upper cast, now mounted using a, a face or ear bow, and now we wanna relate the lower cast or the mandibular teeth to the upper teeth. And we'll do that using a transfer through a bite record. So here we have a Delar bite registration, and what are we doing here? We're recording as we manipulate in centric relation using bimanual manipulation, we're recording the relationship between the upper and lower teeth when the condyle is fully seated in the fossa. So if the face bow or ear bow gives us the fossa, the bite registration gives us the condyle relating to that fossa at the back end of the system. And it will now give us the relationship of the upper and lower teeth to each other when we're on that hinge axis. So we've accomplished job number one, and that is recording the condylar axis. And as Dr. Dawson has taught us, the starting point for all predictable occlusal therapy is what? Centric relation, that fully seated condyle uh, relationship in the fossa recording the condylar axis. So the articulator can do that, and that's its first job. Any articulator that accepts a face bow can accurately record this most important relationship. All face bows essentially do the same thing. And so as we work with the, the NAR slide matic ear bow, it takes two simple steps to accomplish all the things that we're talking about right here in recording the hinge axis. And so uh, it's a very simple approach. It takes about less than one minute to achieve that. It's something that you can learn very easily. What's the second job in a, of an articulator? The second job is to give us the information about an acceptable condylar path in protrusive. In other words, when the patient leaves the seated joint position, we need to know anatomically how that should be related at the joint level. So an acceptable condylar path that combines with an anterior, anterior guidance that discludes the back teeth in all excursions from that seated centric relation position, that's our objective and we can achieve that on the articulator. And in fact, this is an area where it's become much more simple in recent years. Because if we want to record
record an acceptable protrusive path of how the mandible travels on the articulator, it's been demonstrated through research that the shallowest protrusive path angle that you're going to find in studying as many human beings as you want to is an angle of around 30 degrees. So here's what we're going to do. If we're going to restore back teeth, we're going to set on the articulator where we're going to do, be doing that restorative dentistry. We're going to set the protrusive path angle on the instrument at 25 degrees. In other words, just slightly shallower than we're going to find in nature. And this will always result in combination with anterior guidance in disclusion of the back teeth. In fact, more quickly will the back teeth disclude in the mouth than they will on the instrument. So if they disclude on the instrument, we're in great shape. So setting the protrusive path on the instrument right here at 25 degrees will work very well with very, very few exceptions. And so we're just going to automatically do that. The exception that we may find would be in someone who has inadequate anterior guidance. And we want to record the condylar path. Maybe we have an anterior open bite. In that case, what we're going to do very simply on the instrument is take a protrusive bite record. So if we take the patient, put the lar wax in their mouth, and have them protrude forward from centric about four or five millimeters, bite into the registration and record that, then what we can do is put that recording on the articulator, unlock the centric lock, which is right here in the back, unlock the centric lock, put the protrusive bite record in position, and then all we're going to do is release and move the protrusive guide angle until the uh, incline touches the condyle. When we have that, then we've recorded a reproduction of what we saw anatomically in the patient's mouth. And we'll change that angle from 25 degrees to a custom angle for them. Very rarely, very rarely are you going to have to do that. But if you do need to do that, it's very simple. And so job one, to record the condylar axis. Job two, to establish an acceptable condylar path in protrusive. Job three is to establish an acceptable condylar path laterally. Now, fortunately, what has been found in studies is that the maximum angle of the lateral path on the balancing side, so if we move in this direction, the maximum angle that you'll find in nature is around 10 degrees. So what we're going to do on this instrument is set that angle at 15 degrees, giving a little more freedom or a little less help on the balancing side from that balancing side condyle as it translates down and forward. Then if we're restoring posterior teeth and we want to get disclusion both in protrusive in and, and in lateral balancing excursions, where if we clear on the articulator, we will clear even more rapidly in the mouth. So job three, establish a condylar path laterally. That is built into this instrument, and so therefore, that's not something that we would have to modify ever. The last thing that is the fourth job of an articulator is to record the anterior guidance path. So as we think about the anterior teeth, and perhaps we're restoring upper anterior teeth, and we want to establish the lingual contours that are the anterior guidance for the occlusion, how can we, when we have master casts on there with prep teeth, know what that anterior guidance is? The instrument here can do that for us. And the way that we do it is we put a table on the articulator that's customized. And I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, we've made one here for you on this particular set of casts. And we'll put this together to demonstrate that for you. So, if we were to take a master approved provisional model of upper anterior teeth, and now we want to take and put the preps on there and create the new restorations, we can take Ivaline lab acrylic, just in a putty form, put it on this anterior table, and drop the pin into the soft acrylic with the approved provisional teeth, unlock the centric lock, and move the teeth out laterally until we're canine end to end, and we'll guide through the soft acrylic 
we'll move out laterally in the opposite direction, we'll move out protrusively until we're flush end to end and protrusive. And what we're doing is we're scribing in this softened acrylic the lingual contours of the upper anterior teeth. And so that will give us that information. So there we have all four primary jobs of what an articulator can do. Record the condylar axis. Uh, ex establish an acceptable condylar path in protrusive and lateral and record the anterior guidance paths. If you will begin to use an articulator to achieve these things, you will find that the predictability that's achievable is incredible. It's very highly predictable, very efficient on a daily basis, and that of course translates into business profitability day in and day out that uh, can't be matched. And so we really want to encourage you to begin using articulators as a daily part of your practice and see if it won't become your new best friend.